everyone. So today we're here to talk about the biggest mistake that I see new freight brokers and freight agents making when it comes to providing shippers freight rates and freight quotes. So let me walk you through this step by step. Here's the process. As a new broker or a new agent, you're going to find your niche. You're going to build a list of prospects you're going to be reaching out to, and you're going to start doing outreach, typically over the phone, via email, or maybe LinkedIn, or a combination of the two. But you're going to start a dialogue and have a conversation with your prospects. During that conversation, you're going to build some rapport. And if things go well, they're going to ask you to provide you provide them with some freight rates or freight quotes specific to the lanes and needs that they have as a shipping manager, as a logistics manager, as a business, right? So they're going to ask you to provide some rates. So let me give you an example of how that might work. Let's say I spoke with a shipping prospect and they said, well, listen, Dennis, we have van loads going from Buffalo, New York to Atlanta daily. And uh, we'd love you to quote that lane for us. Get back to us and let us know exactly what you can do. All right. So here is the mistake that most new brokers and agents make when it comes to providing freight rates and freight rates and freight quotes. And this mistake can literally cost you millions of dollars. So I want you to lean in and I want you to pay attention to what we're talking about here. Get rid of all your distractions. Come back to me really quick because I know you've already got ADD just like me. So here's the challenge, right? What a lot of brokers do when they get an opportunity to quote freight is they'll go out to their rating software. So a lot of times if someone subscribed to truck stop or to the DAT or to some other load board, a lot of those load boards will have rating tools or rating analysis tools built into them. And those rating analysis tools are an aggregate of data that they've aggregated for the last month or three months or six months or 12 months. And it's a rear view mirror look of what rates are doing. Okay. And so what you'll do is you'll go into that rating software, you'll put in Buffalo to Atlanta van load, and it's going to give you some sort of a per mile or a flat rate or a combination of the two. And what a lot of new brokers and agents do is they will quote that rate to their shipper, or maybe they'll even mark that rate up and quote it to their shipper, right? Because that's typically the rate that either it's going to be defined as that's the rate you're paying a carrier, or that's the rate that a shipper is paying. But ultimately, they use the rates that are dictated by the rating tools, by those rating analysis tools. And that is the mistake. And here's why. I know it seems like that's the right thing to do. And if you hang with me here for just a few more minutes, I'm going to explain to you the right way to do it. But right now, the challenge that you have to understand is what I've observed with these rating tools, as good as they are, it's not uncommon for them to be 10, 20, 30% or more off. And what I mean by that is they can be 10, 20, 30% high. They can be 10, 20, 30% low. And so the challenge with just using that rating tool and that strategy as the sole source for, for, for providing rate quotes, you're going to be wrong a heavy majority of the time. Okay. And so that's the mistake using rating software to do all of your rates and rate quotes for your shippers. Now I know that as a broker and agent, it's very frustrating when you get an opportunity, you get somebody's attention, you build some rapport, they give you an opportunity to quote, you provide them a quote and they come back and they say, Oh, Dennis, you're 15 or 20% high. You know, we can't work with you unless you're able to do it at X rate. So you do all that work and then you miss the rates you miss the opportunity to put a competitive rate in and therefore you miss the business. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be the cheapest and it doesn't mean that it's going to end there. But the point is, is rating is an important part of this. You don't have to be the cheapest, but you definitely can't always be the most expensive. And unless you're doing something significantly different than your competition, it's hard to charge 20 or 30% more. It's not that hard to charge 5 or 10% more, but that's a whole nother lesson. So here, so the point is, and the mistake that new brokers and agents are making is they're using the rating tools exclusively as the data that they're using and aggregating to provide the rate quotes. So let me explain to you the right way. Okay, so here's the right way to do it. I still believe that you should use the rating tools as your first step. Go into the rating tools, look at what a van load from Buffalo to Atlanta costs, right? And what the historical reference is, the closer to that, the last week, two weeks, three weeks, month is going to be the more relevant data. Something that's a year old probably isn't going to be as relevant, of course, right? So use that as a baseline and 
and write that number down. What is that number? Let's say Buffalo to Atlanta. Let's just say the number that the rate that the uh, rating tools gave me is fourteen hundred dollars, right? To the shipper. That's just a hypothetical. So now what I do is the next step. There's a couple steps that you can take beyond that. So one of the first things I would do is I would go into the software like DAT or Truck Stop and I would run a lane history. I think it might be called Lane Makers or Lane History. A lot of times what they'll give you the ability to do is to type in that equipment type, the city and state, and then you'll be able to see a historical view of what carriers have posted their trucks in those lanes in the last 30, 60, 90 days. Not only will it tell you who's posted their trucks in those lanes looking for freight, but it'll also tell you how many times they've posted their trucks, which is extremely valuable. So if in a 30 day period of time, you have a carrier, uh, 10 carriers that have posted their trucks 10, 15, 20 times, that tells you that those carriers are looking for loads out of the Buffalo area to go back to Atlanta. Those would be where you would start. You would simply reach out to those carriers because they'll provide the carrier name and phone number. And then you'll have a started dialogue with them. And the way you do that is that you explain to them what the load is, you tell them you're looking to partner with some carriers for some dedicated freight out of Buffalo to Atlanta. You see they've been posting their trucks there regularly, and then you give them a rate. So if the rating software says 1400, you're not going to, number one, you're not going to ask them how much does it, how much would you need in order to move that load? Because they're always going to tell you more than the going rate. Remember they're in sales too. And you're never going to tell them what, what the lane, what the rating tool said. You're going to start a little bit low. So what I might start at is I might start at around 11 or 1200. And tell the carrier, hey, it's a one pick, one drop van load going from Buffalo to Atlanta, 43,000 um, pounds. You know, that we pay 1100 to the truck and see what they say. At that point, zip your lip and listen. Again, this is sales. This is negotiating. This is being a broker. They want you to pay as much, much as you're willing to pay and you want to pay a fair rate, but you need to be competitive. So ultimately, the carrier is going to come back with one of a couple scenarios. They're going to say, oh. Sure, we can run that. No problem. 1100 bucks. I got a truck there tomorrow. Great. Now you know you can mark down 1100 bucks. But on the next call, you might want to go down a little bit because there wasn't a whole lot of resistance. You're trying to find the market. You're trying to find kind of the sweet spot in the market of what it's going to cost you for a truck. The other scenario is they're going to come back more times than none. They're going to come back and say, oh, Dennis, I couldn't run that for less than 1500 bucks. A higher rate than what came in through the rate analysis tools at a higher rate than you're quoting. And at that point, you can start to negotiate and try to find out where that is. My suggestion to you is, is to negotiate in what I call fives and tens versus fifties and hundreds. Rather than you automatically going up to, you know, 1400, my suggestion, if you started at 1100, you might want to go back and say, listen, the most I could do on something like this would be 1200 bucks or $1,150. And see where they come. If they started at 14 or 1500, they may come down a couple hundred. You may be able to meet somewhere in the middle. And ultimately, now you've got an understanding of what the cost basis of that truck is. Now, you don't just do that for one truck. You don't just do that for one carrier. You know, get three, five, 10 different carriers that are giving you rates on that lane based on that process that I just shared with you. And now you have a good understanding of what the spot market rate for a truck is from Buffalo to Atlanta today right? Which is really what matters. It doesn't matter what it went for three months ago or six months ago. It only matters what it went for today, right? Because that's the best predictor of the rates that you need to provide your shipper in order to get the freight and to be able to support and service the freight at a level that the customer is going to enjoy. So the next step after lane makers is you can also go to the load boards and just search for trucks in that lane and go through the exact same process. Call them, explain the freights, the freight, what the freight is, and then simply um, you know, start a little bit lower, negotiate a rate, write down all those rates that each carrier gives you. And then the last one is you, worst case scenario, if you can't do either one of those two or you're not getting a whole lot of feedback, you can always post a live load to the load boards with, um, you know, Buffalo to Atlanta van loads. If it's a desirable load, you're not going to post a rate in there, but you will post your phone number. You're going to start, if it's a good lane, you're going to start getting some phone calls and you're going to be able to go through that exact same process again. So let's say at the end of this, you get 10 lane, 10, you get 10 different price points back from carriers that are willing to run that load. And it averages out where you know the truck's going to cost you, let's say the truck's going to cost you $1,150 on average. You feel comfortable that on any given day, you're going to be able to move that load for $1,150. At that point, you're now going to add your markup. You're now going to add your margin. 
my suggestion to you when you first start out as a broker or a new agent, don't try to add 20% on top of all your margin, on top of your cost. Start out lower, add 100, add $150. Try to keep it modest. The objective is to get your foot in the door. The hardest part is to get that first load. And so if you can get that first load and do a good job, it turns into two loads, turns into four loads. Remember, there's that old adage, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. So don't be a pig. Um, but ultimately, I want you to understand that, <clears throat> that the key to providing spot market rates, quality rates, accurate rates for your shippers is to understand what a truck is willing to pay today. And the process I just shared with you is going to help you to, to find that out in any lane. You can use this for any type of lane, any type of equipment anywhere in the United States. And you will, within a short period of time, understand what your cost basis is going to be. You can add your markup. And at that point, you can provide a freight quote to your shippers. And that freight quote, while it's not always going to be the cheapest, what you're going to be able to tell them is, listen, this quote comes with a truck. I've got 10 trucks that I've spoke with in the last day that are all willing to move this load at this rate if you're willing to give me that freight. That's a fact. That's the truth. You're not making things up. So rather than trying to be the cheapest, being the most accurate and be the broker that can actually service that load, again, it's easy to be the cheapest. It's easy to be the most expensive. The hard part is to find the sweet spot and to be able to deliver on your promises. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did and you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students. Yes, I just ran a query and checked. It's over 10,000 students now uh, over the last decade. Uh, we offer a 60-day 100% money back guarantee, no questions asked. And... Um, you know, we are well known to be the most cost effective and comprehensive online freight broker training program available on the internet today, right? Again, this is a go at your own pace, self-serve, operate from home, don't need to travel, don't need to do anything. Check out Freight Broker Bootcamp if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or freight agent. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You're absolutely crazy if you're not subscribed to this channel. I do free trainings every single week. Hit the subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a new video.